what's up we're in the second part please go check out the first part to gauge your bearings all right i'm out here uh explaining to you guys that i am being attacked by some strange people all right and they're largely south african i spoke about how it is in the first part that uh these randos are in dire need of the rapture because the rapture is going to help them realize that oh snap they were right first and foremost and secondly it's going to disincentivize them from maintaining the demons in their bodies that keep on manifesting every time they listen to christians speak because now they realize that they don't have the luxury to just bank demons in their bodies they need freedom but for as long as we're walking around in these streets hopping around like kangaroos yeah they are going to disrespect the living dead out of the faith and on top of that constantly keep going back to the drawing board to make us do that which we are never going to do we are never going to do it. Like, Papa, it's never going to happen. But they're going to keep on manifesting demons, aware that they're manifesting demons, aware, therefore, that they're in bondage, aware, therefore, that they need deliverance, but delaying it. Delaying it. They are out just stalling their own deliverance. Okay, what you need is a rapture. So that you will stop stalling. Like, literally, for your own sake, may the Lord take us home. May the Lord take us home, because right now, you are dastardly, you are rebellious, and you are stupid. You are stupid in the worst way. I do not like it when people call people stupid. I find that word obtuse in and of itself. I feel like it's just too simplistic to describe human beings. You need to get into more detail. Don't just call them stupid. Call them, but like, why are you thinking that way? Call them foolish. That while they might have natural intelligence, they lag wisdom. Yeah, stupid is just such an obtuse word. It's so flat. It's, it's, it's like it's, it's got no heartbeat. Yeah, it's, it's boring. It's a boring word. But at this point, the level of insanity and how insidious people are and insipid and, 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 oh guys, like, no, I just, I like proper, vapid, empty, hollow, not ash, colorless. Yeah, you need the word stupid. You're in dire need of the word stupid. You need to roll around with it in the streets and, like, dunk yourself in it like a donut in some chocolate. Mm, stupid. It is utterly stupid to continue in this fashion when you are so inebriated with guilt. You are sorrowful in the worst way. That much is a guarantee. I'm aware of it. But you keep on going back to the drawing board because you are looking at my poverty. And I don't know how many times a spoon feeding Karabo has rocked up here and explained basically the whole poverty principle in the kingdom of heaven and how it is that oftentimes it is a blessing and it is also a, a season of waiting following the suffering state of which the Lord will then restore to that Christian to everything they need lacking and nothing should it be his will. Sometimes people die entirely, utterly poor, having known Jesus Christ. It's a total thing and they get to heaven and the Lord tells them, well done my good and faithful servant, you've fought the fight, you've run the race, you've kept the faith, yet they were poor. All these false doctrines, you need to abandon them, lay them at the door somewhere of some kind of like an orphanage for all things rubbish that that particular orphanage might adopt that little stupid child because it's just that vapid empty colorless and stupid i cannot deal i thoroughly cannot deal manifestation is straight from the pit of hell but i am here to also help you understand that despite it being straight from the pit of hell certain things masquerade like an angel of light and so appear comely they appear seemly in the eyes of those that are otherwise deceivable yeah well this manifestation principle is not even comely to me. There is nothing of it that is a temptation to me. I find it vacuous. It is empty, hollow, not as diabolical. And it's like the cabin in the woods. It's like a horror movie. It's like, it's eerie. It's like Nightmare on Elm Street. It's Freddy Krueger. It's Lizilo. I don't know. It's giving R.I.P. Cadaver, cold bed, mortuary, like crematorium. It's giving soil, sand, gravestone, all things dead. Nothing of it is seemly to me. That's what you must understand. Like, I am not even drawn or attracted to the prospect of quickly just making money because I'm so frustrated by any means necessary. I want to make money. I want to earn, basically, for my day's labor, some kind of reward. I want to be able to be in what would be termed gainful employment. But I've been lamenting all this time that South Africa, all of your sorcery, has contributed to the economic collapse of the nation it has contributed to our economic or to our unemployment statistics unemployment statistics because how in the world are you gonna go bewitch a person out of a career that is perfectly skilled to contribute to the economy you are destroying the country i did call it a state capture i said it's treason your sorcery is treasonous because it is destroying our bottom line as a nation entirely it is decimating our economy but you're not listening and so therefore there's like a whole skills diaspora people are leaving yeah 
that's what I come here and I lament about because I'm not making money, albeit being as skilled as I am. I'm not making money, even though I should be making money. The problem of me not making money is an, a human issue. It's a, it's a South African occult involvement, like dastardly general satanic demeanor issue. The problem here is a spiritual one. It has nothing to do with my rebellion, my recalcitrant disposition, my stubbornness to experiment with every wind of doctrine so I can nicely send myself to a frying pot for eternity. I'm good. I'm good. The problem is not mine. It's you. South Africans, you're the issue. Don't you see? You're the ones that have brought about this like ominous unemployment in the land. I told you it's giving R.I.P. Cadaver Annabelle, the conduit gothica horror movie, the ring, the grudge. It's giving all things eerie. It's giving demons. It's given, it's giving bottomless pit. It's given CERN and Hadron Collider popping into the ecosystem cosmic stratosphere and just bring in some demons. It's giving portal. That's what this is happening. This is, that's what this is giving. It's giving nothing but death, but it's definitely not giving Christian apostasy because that can't truly happen. If you're truly born again, if you're truly a Christian, you are not going to be snatched out from the hand of God. However, those who have fallen apart will heap abuse on you because they have walked in a way of debauchery while you've left it. So it is no wonder you keep on harassing me with all different kinds of principles I find, like I said, cabin in the woody, like horror movie like, you know, uh, uh, things that go bump in the night, like, you know, weird little walking, creepy, crawly, like ashy skin. It's that's all that this is giving ashy skin, ashy, ashy, ashy skin, ashy knees, ashy skin, no blood, zombie like vibes, seeing veins like right through, right through, like proper, like, you know, transparent, translucent human beings walking in the hallways. That's what I'm getting. It's eerie, it's the Adams Family, it's gothic, and then it's Beetlejuice. That's what this is. But it's not influential to convert me over to the satanic kingdom. You are the ones that were gullible. You are the ones that were credulous. You are the ones that were being tossed to and from by every wind of doctrine, like my former friend from MTN. Mm, out here, buying me Rick Warren's perfect, what was the purpose-driven life. Out here, giving me the book, The Secret. Out here, giving me all different kinds of Christian counsel as fellowshipping in Christ. Yes, she is involved in all this other stuff. You are tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Do not expect that you're going to receive anything from God when you ask for anything in prayer, when you are like that anyway, because you are unstable in all of your ways. You're insincere. You're fluffy. You're hollow. You're flaccid. You're ash. Like if you go to God and you ask him, God, please give me a husband. And the next thing you manifest one, what, what are you doing? You're not asking God anything in faith. Therefore, I anticipate that he's going to actually act. If you have it as, as tiny as a mustard seed, you can say to a mountain, move and it'll hop into the ocean. That's what the Bible says. But if you have no faith, you can't please God. So therefore, if you have no faith, you are going to, of course, not only ask a husband from God, but from the manifestation gods, from some idol of manifestation. And when then the husband comes, to whom do you give glory? To whom do you give credit? Do you say, Jesus, thank you for my husband? Or do you say, demon A, B, and Q, R, thank you very much for helping me manifest a hubby? Hypnosis helped me manifest a hubby. Like, uh, a transcendental meditation manifested me a hubby. ABC manifested like proper. Uh, uh, tuning into some strange frequency manifested a hubby for me. Who do you give glory to? God is jealous for his name. He is jealous for his glory. He is jealous for you. Did you understand what I'm saying? He will not share his throne with any bow D. So when then you can't identify who exactly here gave you the husband, dude, God did not have anything to do with it. You are like the praying individual in the book of James. You are being tossed to and from by every wind of doctrine. And so for those reasons, you don't anticipate that anything you ask for in prayer, since you don't believe you're going to get it, given that you went and trusted manifestation on the side alongside Christian prayer, don't expect you're going to get anything from God. You're not going to get anything from God. And you know that your husband is not from God. Why? Because a good and a perfect gift is from a and from the father of heavenly lights and so therefore given that your dastardly husband cheats on you every so often holds you hostage with Bega Mina Pela, speaks down to you tells you that you look like a zebra during pregnancy because of your stretch marks and then won't stop dissing how black your stomach is during that pregnancy and then tells you you must obviously be having a boy because your nose is gargantuan honey that is not a man from God his speech is not seasoned with salt. He does not care about how you feel and he is emotionally abusive. But hey, guess what? You manifested him. That's what that's what you're dealing with. That's what you guys are dealing with. You've got all these like crappy, flaccid, fluffy, random, not really truly, like provisions. You've got jobs you didn't quite sign up for. You've got husbands you didn't quite sign up for. You've got all different kinds of weird things you acquired from Jesus because you prayed to him while manifesting that you didn't quite sign up for. And then you claim that that's the good and perfect gift that comes from above. You claim you are blaspheming God's name. Far be it from you to do such a thing as that. You are saying that that's the thing that neither eye has seen nor ear has. So proper look at your husband. Look at your wife. And you are saying that that is the wife. That is a good thing. That uh, that has made me obtain favor from the Lord. The chick is a Jezebel. She's a Je in these streets thoroughly. Only with you. Because you done started making some money. And yet you think it's a good thing. 
she, 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 she's your like perfect manifestation for real. And that's why you're salivating outside of Karabo's life. That's why you're salivating outside of Christian churches. Aja trying to grab a second wife. Aja trying to pretend that that woman is Vashti and she is Esther. That's why you are thoroughly investigating the things of God because you are sick and tired of your Jezebelian female, your Delilic female. I do apologize. I thoroughly do apologize. You are blaspheming the name of God by standing in front of a whole church after you've gotten married to a person that you manifested through ancestors or whatever, claiming that he or she is from God. Because once things start to fall apart and it becomes clear that they are bearing no fruit, you will have blamed God for bringing you a bad apple. That's all that you're doing. You are tarnishing the name of the God of God on the earth. You are derealizing him. You are causing creation to groan. To see the sons of God revealed because we're the only ones that wait perfectly and truly for God. Not perfectly. He helps us wait. In and of myself, I've been, you know, antsy a lot of times. I've grumbled. I've done all different kinds of things. I've not waited perfectly. And yet he has enabled me nonetheless, given me grace nonetheless. I still don't have a husband to this day. I don't have children still to this day because I thoroughly comprehend that neither eye has seen nor ear has heard nor mind conceive the things which God has prepared for those who wait for him. Therefore, should the Lord see it fit to give me a husband, which at this point I don't think is coming because we gotta go. Granted that you are still manifesting demons, but you don't want to get deliverance. So rapture must happen to handle you. However, should I get a husband, you will know that he's from God. You will know that he's from God because it won't compare to anything I've asked for before. I will be able to therefore give God a good testimony. His name, sorry, I will therefore give his name, glory, praise, elevation at the acquisition of that which I waited years, over a decade to acquire. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. But some of y'all who done manifested your husbands in two weeks, honey, you and your lack of patience. It is no wonder he's a wife beater, Archer making like I turner turner, eating the cake, eating the cake. That's you. That's you. But nah, he was your, he was from God initially. The whole church was Archer celebrating. People talking about how it is, oh my goodness, Lerato's been so blessed with a husband. No girl. Mm -mm. Because now everybody's mum. Everybody's mum. Your little testimony has gone into the water. Now you're getting a divorce. That's what's good. But it's from God. Uh uh, relax. Blom. That's all that your imperfect little manifestation techniques achieve imperfect gifts because only good gifts and perfect ones uh. come from above and from the father of heavenly lights i've got lots of air in my throat because i've been talking at length mm. i had uh, uh <laughs> never mind that dream. i'm gonna tell you that dream just now but that the ad that i'm talking about on youtube you would know i mean seeing as i've been speaking so much about manifestation you would know you would know it's doing its rounds and it's, it's super long sometimes it's like 45 minutes or so, 45 minutes long half an hour it's like really who invests in half an hour worth of ad money like it's just so much money it costs so much money to do a two second advert how much then must you invest to do an advert that just lingers for 40 minutes like there are times when i have how do i even know that it's sometime it's that long because i would never write it out i would never listen to the whole thing yeah i would leave my computer running on scriptures like meditation scriptures on some channel and then i'd go and wash the dishes in the kitchen do the rounds use the bathroom come back and that ad would have been running for a whole season while I was outside. And I would notice the progress bar literally chilling on 20 minutes. And they still look like there's like a whole gap left. So another 20 minutes still to go with this dude speaking smack. About using all different kinds of weird like meditation techniques. Frequency tapping into techniques. Hypnosis techniques. Weird little strange stuff. Techniques. Yeah. 40 minutes go fella. I mean the fact that the ads are still running. And they, that they haven't gone bankrupt for running them for that long form from YouTube. I'm thinking that this is probably a million dollar ad campaign. They are making money. They're getting clients. It's, it's, it's succeeding to recruit some souls. It's satanic. It's winning people over for the kingdom of darkness. People are so desperate, salivating at the prospect of making money that they, for the life of them, are prepared to take any counsel at all, even if it's odd, you know, strange, eerie. Like I said, Cabin in the Woody. It's giving horror movie vibes. It's oozing Chucky Chucky's Brad Candyman, but like they're running with it anyway type of stuff to make a whole house shake on the spot with nothing moving and not a hurricane nah just some demons and yet you're running with it yet you're running with it that's what's good i find it creepy that ad those ads i find those people eerie anomalous and it takes a minute and a year and a decade to finally get to skip ad oh oh but in the season of waiting to skip the ad i've heard enough i've heard enough I have heard enough manifesting money. The woman, I think she's Australian and the man is American. And the two of them just go and go in training people. One time in the ad, the ad started with this woman being like, there are many celebrities who are master manifestors. 
Oprah is a master manifester and then Oprah comes on and she's like I am a champion at manifesting this was before I could skip ad and the whole time I remember just thinking of course you are Oprah of course you're a master manifester because we all know what your doctrines are we all know that you don't think there's only one way to heaven we all know that so do we you're a master manifester Oprah however let me tell you this one thing about Oprah Winfrey she did not make her billions from manifesting. I can tell you that now. This stupid thing that is doing its rounds on the internet is recent. Kintoya, the last maybe five to ten years. Oprah's been around for a lot longer. She, the Chigu woman was around when I was in high school for crying out loud. Oprah worked hard to win opportunities in Hollywood. And now that she's a billionaire, she's actually selling a satanic principle for what? For what? She's not a master manifester. She is a woman that worked like a dog to get to where she got. And then somewhere along the way picked up occult magic. Picked up all different kinds of strange spiritualities. Because when money attaches to you like Velcro, the devil attaches to you demon doctrines like Velcro too. He gets people in the entertainment industry who break in initially through blood, sweat and tears. So basically their hard work won them money the way that it should be. And then once they were in... He then flips them. We all know what happens to them. They get dark somewhere along the way. They strive and break their backs to go to auditions. They voice train. They acting train. They do all different kinds of stuff to sharpen, hone in on their art. And then they finally get noticed. And then once they are noticed, they release one little album or they do one little movie. And when it succeeds, in order for them to be maintained in their state, they now have got to suture themselves to demonic principles. So for me, it's like even with these celebrities, what's the point? You are literally being raised up in order to teach the world that the devil is God. When you did not even get your career boost from the devil, the devil rode the wave of your success. He did not give you the success. He rode the wave. Your success came from your blood, sweat and tears. You worked by the sweat of your brow. You trained. You auditioned, you sang, you did art, you whatever it is that these celebrities, you rapped, you wrote lyrics upon lyrics upon lyrics, a whole bunch of poetry, and auditioned in front of a music executive. And he liked you. You then release one album and it flies. All of a sudden, you are your one eye symbolism. All of a sudden, you are your 666. All of a sudden, you are your making like Doja Cat doing some demonic um, photo op on Instagram. All of a sudden, proper. When literally your talent is what got you from the first to the first milestone it's a deception i don't know why people don't see it it's a total total deception look at is a jojo siwa that little child that reason that uh, she said that she's gay and she all different kinds of things are going all awry but she released a very dark music video recently jojo was a is a is a talented um dancer she started out in that uh, dance mom's like situation like a whole like ballet all different kinds of dance like basically she's got dance skill jojo also blew up on YouTube with her own blood, sweat and tears. Little child kids liked her. She grew a YouTube channel organically with no magic, with no satanic worship, with no darkness. And then once she was a beast, now she's out just 666ing. Now she's out just Miley Cyrusing. Now she's Papa, even Miley, all of them. They all like, it's they get baited. And then next thing they get thrown to the gators in the ocean. It, it shows that God's way is always the right way. Work by the sweat of your brow, make money. But in a society that is headed towards disregarding of people's hard labor to pay them, that is a society that is heading towards the very end of the world. Because there's gonna come a time in the history of the human race where your skills don't matter, where your talents don't matter, when how well you can sing, how high you can hit the notes, don't matter. It will not matter how intelligent you are, how well spoken like a rabo get the gab you are. It will not matter how well you can paint, it will matter how well you can crunch numbers. How incredibly gifted you are. What an Einsteinic mind you got. It won't matter if you won't capitulate to a satanic agenda. If you won't allege to a dark entity. I was actually listening to uh, a sermon done by Vodi Bakum at um, uh, Genesis. Questions from Genesis like that ministry. Talking about the same thing. How it is that Paul and them were called simple minded men. Not because they were actually simple or, or illiterate or couldn't write but because they were considered simple for simply believing what they believed. So you're simple not because you can't read, write, or are intelligent. You're simple because you won't be a devil worshipper. You won't be a... You won't allege to a satanic ideology. Is that basic? Mm. So the simple-minded by the standards of this world are people like Arabo, who, albeit being skilled in very many areas, will not be able to make money because making money is no longer about the sweat of your brow. It is about who you allege to. 
So all the different kinds of things get flipped upside down. It becomes a perversion where in the scriptures it is written that a little sleep and a little slumber and a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty will overwhelm you like an armed man and scarcity like a bandit. Now, you don't got to be sleeping and slumbering to be poor. You just got to be Christian. You just have to be godly. You just have to refuse to lay down in bed with certain ideologies. Then you're going to go hungry. You, you go hungry because you don't agree with certain people. It's no longer about hard work and a society like that of course will crumble because then you get rid of all of the skills you you get rid of truly hard-working people you stop paradigm shifting you stop progressing it is no wonder the world therefore ends in a big fat explosion second coming of the lord jesus christ breath of his mouth da 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 like dominoes shall the army of armageddon fall to the ground like proper when 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 people are no longer being rewarded for their hard work but they're being rewarded for their allegiance we we've lost the plot we've entirely lost even god did not do that god it's written in god's word that rain falls on both the righteous and the wicked even the lord does not say i will feed you only if you worship me he has given the earth like that's why there are so many psalms where it is that the psalmists are actually lamenting how long will you let the wicked thrive and prosper the wicked are always prospering the wicked are always prospering god is gracious he's amazing he's good he's good he is good and because he is good he allows even his enemies to harvest at the same time that we harvest our crop even though they're unjust and evil and violent he gives them grace he is slow to anger abounding in steadfast love that's god but the devil the devil is of course the very and not the, uh, you know he's not the antithesis of god that puts him on equal playing ground but he does a lot much of what he does in the opposite fashion to god the devil is the one that will say you're not going to eat you're not going to harvest the crop you are not going to have rain falling on your land if you don't allege to me he is that below the belt underhanded rando that plays real dirty and is super petty and so for those reasons the deception ought to be stark staring at you cleanly in the face with pie even on it to let you know that you are deceived in the worst way to run with satan to allow yourself to be wed off to satanic ideologies doing strange mantras chanting having been raised in a christian household just so you can get a job a husband guys it's a frankenstein you are literally creating frankenstein provisions for yourselves you are bringing frankenstein nick type provisions if if you are going to use demons to bring just about anything and everything you want in your life you are going to acquire a frankenstein it's not going to operate the way that you want it to it's not going to be pressable as a button where it is that you press press okay it's not going to do what you want it to do and the result is going to be this diabolical like onslaught on people like me who have organically held on to the god of the universe and now these thirsty frankensteins working around all over the show want to go and grab something organic when it doesn't belong to them they're muddy they have absolutely muddied their garments and they want to grab something organic because it waited microwave generation of people repent or perish is that basic is the great apostasy but you keep going back to the drawing board and granted that you're going back to the drawing board what is imperative now then i guess to happen is for us to go back home because it is no longer worth a while is it for us to try and encourage you unto redemption to help you see to do apologetics that you might understand that you might heed it has become entirely fruitless because all you do after manifesting demons and so therefore realizing you have a problem is go back to the drawing board instead of get some medication for the disease in your body get some medication for the disease in your body you need help you need a physician you need to get out from the kingdom of darkness i find that man and woman eerie i find them creepy and yet i had a dream where I was coming down a staircase being waited for by a proud conglomerate of deadbeat dads a whole bunch of men proud that I finally saw that I'm not gonna get out of this unless I manifest my house manifest my house and guess what the house looked like it looked like the house of some dude that God has exposed for being involved in dark arts however is a professing Christian and is very well respected in the Christian community I'm not going to tell you who he is you will find out if the rapture happens because he's still going to be sitting around in these streets he's been using witchcraft to get his life ahead yet rocking up and speaking to us like he's a Christian and he's not one of those flagrant heretics that you will disregard straight off the bat no he's largely sound so he's hard to detect to detect but the Lord has exposed him as involved in dark arts and one the, the other day on facebook he showed everybody his new his house it had like a a parallel staircase like you know when you've got stairs going up a, a household on on two sides on two sides it's like whoa dude so you're making that much money good for you only for the lord to expose him at least in my understanding everybody else still thinks he's the real deal legit as a lost cause no, no, not a lost cause but a lost man that could still I, I think he can still get saved i don't know what's going on there but he's definitely not presently saved He's using sorcery. He is a man that is 
<laughs> exchanging the truth of God for a lie, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, and they're leading him straight to hell. But he somehow thinks that because he is voracious in the things of God and is helping a lot of people turn to Jesus Christ, that somehow he's going to be safe. I told you guys that there is a, a whole epidemic of people that aren't really of God, that are, however, very sound doctrinally, that are leading millions to Christ. But in and of themselves, they shut out of the kingdom of heaven. I did a video of that nature the other day. Mm. I did a video of that nature. One of them, I had a dream of her being left behind in the tribulation and uh, like a proper shock, shock, the shock to the world that she is still here in these streets and she will have to confess at that stage why I, I, I say let move her. She will have to explain to people, guys, it's not that doctrine was off. It's not that I was wrong in the things I said I was right, but I had a double life. She's going to come out and confess that she had a double life. She will repent. Her husband is going to get raptured. <laughs> but she's going to be left behind. <laughs> How did that man not know that his wife was lost? I, anyway, whatever. Like these people always, t they, they tends to be something that evidences that they are getting into something with uh, an unbeliever, but they run with it anyway. They run with it anyway. What I'm trying to get at is that in this dream, I was walking down the stairs, and I was walking down the stairs of that man's house, the, the dude that I just told you about now, the content creator that is very well respected in the faith. Yeah, I was. It was that house, but it was me. But I was, I was in the image or form of that Australian woman. I was talking about manifesting. Yeah, and I was being waited for downstairs, and the fact that I was coming down a staircase was just telling in and of itself. I was degrading. I was downgrading. Okay, uh, but I was well welcomed. I was well received. It's almost like it's almost like I was getting married into the occult. Well, guys, like stop. I have a I have a foundation, and these men were all looking at me on some. Oh, she finally did it. Like they were proud of. Whoa, guys. Hey, Batung. <laughs> there is a song by Lauren Hill in. Uh, unplugged you know the one that she did after everybody called her crazy it starts like the road to hell is paved with good intentions yeah the road to hell is paved with good intentions you think you're having my back you're looking out for me all you need to do is manifest so you won't have to suffer so much why because you did it you did it already so that's the that, that's the barometer now by which we measure our activity or our um prospect of activity what we ought to do is, is measured by the fact that other people did it. I'm sorry, no, the Bible says the road is narrow that leads to life that few people find. But the road is broad that leads to destruction that many enter into. So the barometer by which we measure whether or not we should be doing something is not so much that many people are doing it. It is that Christ did it. We fashion ourselves unto Christ, not the world. Because that there is going to lead you violently astray. The broad road that leads to destruction is entered into by many, many and these people were actually chilling at the bottom of this joint, proud of me for finally manifesting my dream house. For real. It's okay. I have a dream house. It's in the sky. He left and prepared a table, not a table, that too. But like what I wanted to say was a place for me. In my father's house are many rooms. And I go there to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come and fetch you and bring you to myself. That where I am, you may be also. Thus saith the Lord of the universe. So it's okay. It's all right. If I don't have a, a double staircase mansion to hop up and down in like a little kangaroo and a bunny rabbit all in one sitting. Yeah, it's all good in the hood. I have one in heaven because that's where I have gathered for myself treasures. Okay, they're in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and thieves do not come in and steal. Where it is that you guys are stealing, there you can take Jack. So it's fine. I'll wait for my heavenly mansion. I will wait to be taken to the sky. If at all you refuse that I should live yeah, right here on earth. This like South Africa of yours that did not even disciple me is thoroughly trying to get me to um, practice the stipulations inside that silly book, The Secret, however claiming to be Christian. Master Manifesta, if I can't find a difference, we are, and, and mind you, even that advert with the Master Manifesta lady, yeah, and dude, none of them mention the Bible, not even in the slightest. It's it's entirely pagan. It's clearly not um, like uh, marketed to deceive anybody into believing that it's Christian. And yet there are a whole bunch of Christians actually using those principles and laundering them with the Bible as if though that is a real laundromat. All the best with stuff like that, okay? I'm not a master manifester. The only manifesting that happens when I speak is of your demons. That's what's good. Like proper. The only manifestation that is going on over here is what do you want with us? Like a washing machine that is at the end of its cycle. If you think I'm in prison, you will come to learn soon and very soon that I am freer than free can ever be. I am a bird. I am flying like Nelly Furtado. 
I am soaring like an eagle, mounting up with wings like it, running, not fainting, walking and not growing weary. Do not look at me in this earthly bondage and anticipate me a captive. I've been set free. And he or she who has been set free by the Son of Man is free. Indeed, I am free. I am free. I am freer than free can never be free because I'm born again. I have no desire to return to the mire. I have no interest in making money by any means necessary. If the Lord will see it fit to keep me in this position, I will look at the example of my brother Job. Naked, I came into this world. Naked shall I leave. The Lord has given and the Lord has now taken away. Yet blessed be the name of the Lord. In all that Job did, he did not sin. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil and many who have wandered after it have pierced themselves with many pains. Y'all want me to test something that is not of God? God says thou shalt not test the Lord your God. In the test in the wilderness Christ was told to jump off a cliff so essentially kill yourself and trust the angels of God to catch you for it is written they will bear you up in their wings so that you do not strike your foot against a stone. The angel of the Lord will be charged concerning you. So jump and you'll be caught. And God said, thou shall not test the Lord your God. So you want me to jump to test to see if given that once saved, always saved, I will go to heaven anyway. When you do certain things, when you capitulate to certain indiscretions, you display by them that you were never saved. Demas left us, for he was never of us. That's the difference between man's responsibility and God's sovereignty. He is sovereign in salvation, yes. But when you do certain things, you display in your behavior that you're, that in your behavior that you're not born again. It is written in God's word that, what is this? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Test to see if you're in the faith. If I were to allow myself to partake in new age and occult practices, I would very highly likely, if I am maintained in any kind of intellectualism, also have to write myself off as a Christian. Because there's no way that I can maintain a peaceability within myself of being a child of the living God, using one saved, always saved. What work he has begun in me, he will finish it as a means to sin. It's written in God's word in Romans 7. What then shall we say? Must we sin so that grace may abound? Absolutely not. But what we are saying is that if you do sin, grace abounds evermore. So that scripture only applies when you're not out you're walking around in some dastardly, like priest, uh, what a presumptuous sin, where you are sinning despite knowing that it is grieving God egregiously. You know that it is afflicting God. You, you can't continue to walk in that miry disposition. And anticipate yourself a believer. When you keep on taking God for granted, herein lies the deal. You're not of God. You're not of God. Is that basic? It is literally all that very plainly simple and basic. So seeing as I am of God, I am grafted in, I am bearing fruit. I have a fear of the Lord, therefore I revere him. Revere him enough to not experiment with different kinds of or all different kinds of spiritualities. I'm just building for myself golden calves, testing a holy God. There is there is fear wrought in the heart of a saint for their creator that even when they're grumbling over their sorrow their tumult their pain they don't just mess with god they don't just mess with him so if you can easily mess with god and manifest and do that because you're tired of waiting whoa check yourself to see if you're in the faith who knows lest you should fail test yourself so i would implore all of y'all who went on right ahead to test these biblical principles not ignorantly not ignorantly like i was initially ignorant about manifestation being not of god but knowingly knowing that you are sick and tired of waiting on God. Honey, on that day, just double check if you're born again at all. Are you not that piggy going to the mire? Are you not under heaven that doggy out you're going back to eat its own vomit? Is that not what you're doing? If you have no fear of God, you have no wisdom, you have no knowledge, you are highly unlikely born again, or you are on some violent spiritual milk. The Holy Spirit ought to implore you, however, to do better. He will discipline you if you are his. If you are a legitimate child of God, he will discipline you. He will rebuke you. So if you are not being snatched out from your dastardly behavior because you're sick and tired of waiting on God, God might award you amnesty because you're sitting in a seeker sensitive church that's not teaching you right but if after listening to karabo 10,000 times and people like me 10,000 times and you still do what you're doing honey you are not born again you are not saved you are just testing the system jefela hoping jefela wincing at death like proper vehicle is coming train is coming to hit you and you're just like all right okay i hope i go to heaven when you were in the seat of satanism at the time of your death you're naive to think that you're going to be ushered into god's rest on that day like you don't know when that day is going to come for you as well your death that is so stop trying to get christians to fall down to your level but rather rise up to where it is that we are seated in heavenly places with the man christ jesus 
come to where we're at and stop trying to bring us down to where you're at otherwise we will get extracted from this ecosystem i keep on getting dreams of me getting on an airplane i keep on getting visions of, of me um uh, what, what is this uh, like I, I saw like muddy mur murky water just like almost like a, 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 an ocean an ocean right um but the world like it was not cleaned like a beach that hasn't been cleaned in a while because the, the area the environment is desolate and, and the waters uh, being so high that they reached like homes and like muddy ugly dirty littered field water just hovering like right here near where it is that we stay and i mean we're inland we're in johannesburg there's no ocean here but there was some dirty like river or slash ocean water that was un like it was dirty it it's almost like there were no municipal services operating nothing at all of governmental intervention because like a land has, has just been left destitute or barren or something i had a, a vision of that the other day like through uh, when i was working out i heard that song that i rewrote by halsey again where i'm speak where i'm lamenting about men who are trying to like basically planning a kidnapping and then orchestrating the release of the victim you you kidnap a woman and then you orchestrate her release that hegelian dialectic type model all this wickedness and the uh, just day before i did a video where basically i was saying that god confirmed to me that the rapture is at the door why wouldn't it be when instead of trying to get born again because you realize that you are in chains still why are you still going back to the drawing board trying to get a christian to manifest a dream house to manifest her dream husband manifest her children i don't want those frankenstein kids and i also don't want that frankenstein husband i don't and if at all he won't come through because i'm going to constantly be beleaguered on all sides by deadbeat dad ten amounts it's fine let me go home then y'all need to be lambasted with a rapture that's what i'm getting at you are stubborn it's not like you are unaware of your rebellion it's not like you are not what is the word that i'm looking for your your the word that i'm looking for is conviction conviction you are convicted you have conviction and guilt is gnawing away at you it's eating at you like a maggot on dead flesh it's time you lived oh valley of dry bones you have conviction you have guilt you are heavied but you are delaying the inevitable you're stalling for real because you think you're in a position to stall that's just the thing you thoroughly think that you can stall my breakthrough stall my deliverance except oh, even the fact that i don't yet have anything that i ask for from god in prayer is the strong delusion I'm a consecrated Christian that if I abide in God and his word abides in me, I ought have basically been given everything I asked for in prayer. So if I'm not getting it, it's not that God lied. It's that God is doing something with this and all I could think about is that it's a strong delusion. It's a strong delusion. I believe among the strong delusions on the planet in the last days is going to be the fact that people are going to, among the strong delusions, is going to be the fact that people are going to be self-deluded. They, they, they are going to be not self deluded sorry but the thing that i wanted to say was um sorry i'm distracted by the time because i've just been rapping on for like ever and a day and it's very late right now mm. it's the fact that christians are going to look like they, there's no god coming through for them until we get taken in the sky you are expediting a rapture the fact that i dreamt about me being that master manifester australian lady i apologize i'm sorry it'll never happen i will never ever turn to any strange practice because i'm tired of waiting on god it's not happening i'm holding on to the pearl of great price philadelphian church not letting anybody take my crown but just the fact that you've made out of me like the philadelphian church that's the problem what i wanted to read you was the letter to the church in thyatira to help you understand what's about to happen to you i'm going to read that and then close out because time is eating at me like a maggot mm. it's the letter to the church in thyatira listen to what they say okay and to the angel of the church in Thyatira, write the words of the Son of God, not they, he, John, or it could be the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, so I guess I'm not that wrong. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira, write the words of the Son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your works, your love and faith and service and patient endurance, and that your latter works exceed the first. But this I have against you. You tolerate that woman jezebel who calls herself a prophetess essentially you are listening to all of these destructive heresies and doctrines of demons you are tolerating that master manifester and so because you keep tolerating her god is going to throw you on a sick bed go throw her in a sick bed sorry and then you into great tribulation let's read but i have this against you that you tolerate that woman jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols is that not what y'all are trying to do to me with all of y'all's corobela 
with all of y'all's ancestral worship and whatnot you are thoroughly trying to get me to downsize myself to some kind of pagan form of spirituality that mixes in christianity into it while she's walking these streets like a kangaroo like proper i'm not doing it you are trying to train me to walk away from god you are tolerating jezebel you are tolerating false prophecy you are tolerating falsehood you are tolerating evil doctrines that are slithering them way into the it's leaven into the body of christ a little leaven levers the whole lump it's what i'm getting at you're tolerating her and when you do that great tribulation bah let the hit on your head like a gong like, just land on you like that rapture happening and like, gah, tribulation that's what you need mm. Okay, let's read. But I have this against you, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. I gave her time to repent. My point exactly, you see. You've been given time to repent. God is again. Disinterested. Entirely. Keep on going mass or drawing board gang strosities. <laughs> I gave her time to repent, but she refuses to repent of her sexual immorality. Behold, listen to this. I will throw her onto a sick bed and those who commit adultery with her i will throw into great tribulation unless they repent of her works my point exactly unless you repent now you are demon possessed why are you still carrying around in these streets in this like dastardly disposition Ingan. Hmm. i will throw her onto a sick bed and those who commit adultery with her i will throw into great tribulation unless they repent of her works and i will strike her children dead and all the churches will know that i am he who searches mind and heart and will give each of you according to your works but to the rest of you in Thyatira, who do not hold to this teaching like Karabo, who have not learned what some call the deep things of Satan, Master Manifesta, <laughs> who do not hold to this teaching, who have not learned what some call the deep things of Satan, to you I say, I do not lay on you another burden. Only hold fast to what you have. <laughs> Guys, until I come, the one who conquers and who keeps my works until the end to him, I will give authority over the nations. Hallelujah. Amen millennial reign and he will rule with them with a rod of iron as when earthen pots are broken in pieces even as i myself has re have received authority from my father and i will give him the morning star he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches it makes you juve and jive hey batum god i mean guys you and your master manifest uh, sick bed great tribulation but to those of us who are not interested he lays on us no extra burden like south africa you are thyatira i've said this many times before combination of Sardis, Thyatira, and Laodicea. Lukewarm seeker sensitive, maybe even Pergamum, Satan has his throne all up in your grill. Bah! You need a tribulation gah, to be thrown at you because you are out here tolerating the woman who is a master manifester. Huh? Not doing it. I'm not going out like that. It's up to you if you want to join me in the kingdom of heaven. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. No thank you to master manifestation. It's all good in the hood. If Oprah's doing it, I'm not trying to kick with it. It's that basic. I'm signing out in Christ's name. Crank K. Hope you've been edified. Bye.